You won't believe how insanely woke the New York Times has become, according to one ex-employee who's just now speaking out for the first time about his wild experiences at the newspaper. Now let's break down this crazy story, which we're getting because former New York Times opinion staffer Adam Rubenstein just published a bombshell essay in The Atlantic. Now in this essay, Adam tells a crazy story about his new hire orientation when he joined The Times. On one of my first days at The New York Times, I went to an orientation with more than a dozen other new hires, he writes. We had to do an icebreaker, pick a starburst out of a jar, and then answer a question. My starburst was pink, I believe, so I had to answer the pink prompt, which had me respond with my favorite sandwich. So I blurted out, the spicy chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A, and considered the ice broken. The HR representative leading the orientation chided me, we don't do that here. They hate gay people. People started snapping their fingers in acclamation. I hadn't been thinking about the fact that Chick-fil-A was transgressive in liberal circles for its chairman's opposition to gay marriage. Not the politics, the chicken, I quickly said, but it was too late. I sat down, ashamed. Guys, can you believe how insanely out of touch a newsroom would have to be to operate like this? Of course, some New York Times staffers and other progressive journalist types leaped to argue that this never happened. This anecdote was clear made up. But as it turns out, Adam has been telling people this story for years, and multiple people came forward to confirm that he told them this anecdote all the way back in 2019. So unless he made up this story nearly five years in advance in a grand plan to one day have a fire anecdote to write an essay about, it's almost certainly a true thing that actually happened. And frankly, for anybody who's actually worked in these super woke media spaces, it's just not that hard to believe. I mean, I went to a super far left college and I worked at the student newspaper, which was the wokest, most far left bubble echo chamber environment I've ever been in. And I will never, ever forget the time I was written up and threatened with termination, all because I used the term boy who cried wolf to describe a colleague who identified as non-binary. Yes, seriously. I'm not making that one up. Now, any sane or rational person would know that that's just a phrase that we use to describe people who raise the alarm about things prematurely. But this newspaper was such a woke echo chamber, they practically thought I'd committed a hate crime. So it's just not at all a stretch to me that the New York Times could be similarly warped in its internal dynamics. And it's still crazy that in any environment, no matter how much of an echo chamber, liking Chick-fil-A could be a controversial opinion. You've just gotta be so out of touch because the vast majority of Americans, both Democrats and Republicans, black and white, even many LGBT Americans like myself, all love Chick-fil-A and we don't find them hateful or controversial whatsoever. Like, I might disagree with the owner's personal views about gay marriage, but they stopped most of their controversial political giving years ago. And more importantly, Chick-fil-A as a company has always treated kindly and welcomed all customers and all employees, regardless of their orientation. So for a newspaper employee to be shamed, let alone snapped at, over liking Chick-fil-A is genuinely just unhinged. And it can only happen in an environment that's just totally out of touch with American life, which is why this story actually matters. Places like the New York Times are obsessed with diversity, and they go to great lengths to ensure that they have people in their newsroom who check off every possible box on the census. But they really only care about that surface level, superficial kind of diversity, having a bunch of people who look different, but all think the same. If you were to go into the New York Times newsroom and ask questions like, how many people here own a gun? How many people here go to church on Sundays? Or how many people here were born in a red state? Very, very few hands would go up. And that kind of lack of real diversity, of diversity of experience and background, well, that's why newspapers like the Times really struggle to fairly cover actual America and actual American life with its broad diversity. So these supposedly woke media outlets would be much better off if they stopped obsessing over surface level identity and focused more on having meaningful diversity of experience in their ranks. Otherwise, they'll just keep getting more and more out of touch and lose whatever scrap of credibility they still have.